Hey, you fucks. Thanks for, you know, checking out the videos, showing a little bit of support. How about you take it to the next level and uh, show us some love over there on Patreon, huh? 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 You just don't go changing trying to please me because you know what? You never looked that way before. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'll take the good times and I'll take the bad times because you know what? I'm going to take you just the way you are. The what? <laughs> I mean, uh, what's up, guys? How's it going? Welcome back to another TKO Rants. Uh, I am actually not on the bike right now, believe it or not. I am... Uh, uh, yeah, like I, uh, it is spring now, spring in, in, uh, the Tokyo, Japan Zor stuff, and, uh, yeah, but, uh, my microphone was, uh, dead, I was, you know, this is one of the things about, you know, like, uh, doing YouTube or filming stuff, you're like, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna film some stuff, it's gonna be so good, and yeah, and then you're like, oh shit, I don't, uh, I don't have any batteries, <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? I didn't... Oh, God. And so, uh, yeah, this was just a, a video where uh, I was like, well, I'm out and I'm on my motorcycle anyway, so I might as well just record the footage and then I can at least uh, <coughs> record some audio over it afterwards. So, no biggie, right? But anyway, how you guys doing? Uh, yeah, this is... Um, God, it feels so good feels so good to like have spring finally back in Tokyo. This is like right before it starts getting shitty. Like it's so funny. Like in Japan you have like three wet seasons, right? You get like um you get a uh, uh, wait, what is it three or two? It's June and then there's September, right? And then uh like summer is just fucking sweltering hot. Uh, especially in Tokyo, everyone's got their air conditioner turned on, <coughs> so all those excess heat fumes are coming up, and then plus the sun just shines on all of the fucking cement, which just amplifies the heat, and, uh, it's just, like, it's sweltering, you know, like, I lived in Las Vegas, and this is, this is hotter than Las Vegas because of the, the humidity, and just the power of the sun. So, like, right now, if you ever want to come to Japan, you're like, when should I go, Dad? Come, like, now. Like, come between, like, I'd say, uh, yeah, like, end of March till, like, the be, you know, like, till, like, uh, like, the end of May kind of thing. Like, this is a perfect time to come. The weather's great. It doesn't rain that much. It's just perfect. And anyway, yeah, it just feels good to be back on the bike and just getting out there, you know? Like, um... You can tell this is a 2024 rant because I'm wearing my my gay uh, Japanese beads uh, bracelet. Uh, it's the tiger. What is it? It's like the tiger beads, the tiger eyes, and then the jade too. It's pretty cool, you know. I, I dig it. I like it, you know. Uh, and then I got my bandana too and everything. But anyway, I don't know. Today's topic is gonna be fun. We're gonna be talking about, um, you know, what will Japan be like in 10 years and. Uh, yeah, you know, um, this is one of those things where, you know, you, you think to yourself, because like a lot of us, I think I'm not alone when I think it's just like, you know, this is not like, you know, I don't really think, uh, I think it's so hard to plan ahead, you know, like, I mean, it's, it, it's easy and hard at the same time. Like it's easy to make the, make the idea, make the plans, but it's hard to like enact them. Right. And that's the. That's the issue that we all have, right? And, um, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, I was thinking today, um, well, not just today, like this last week or whatever, it's just like, what will Japan be like 10 years from now? Because it seems like ever since Corona, uh, kind of like finished and, um, and Japan reopened up, there's been a lot of stuff regarding tourists and just like the future of Japan. And, uh, yeah, so I want to talk about that today. But it is the four minute point at this point. So uh, let me just do my thing where I shout out everybody. Big shout out to everybody who comes over here and uh, joins my Patreon over at patreon.com slash Sam. Because I don't really make any money off the advertising on these videos. The views are too low. And uh, not that I'm complaining about that. But like uh, this channel is 100% fan funded guys. So if you like these videos and you want to keep them going. Please consider uh, going over to Patreon and becoming a, a member over there even a dollar or two it just helps you know and um 
and it's cool. You get, you know, you get a bunch of different bonuses if you join the Patreon. You can, uh, you know, I've got a blog there. I've got behind the scenes footage, and most importantly, I have Japanese lessons because I know that a lot of you guys are thinking about coming over to Japan, and you've probably taken Japanese lessons before, done the Duolingo bullshit, and it just didn't work. You couldn't stick with it, right? And uh, you're probably wondering, hey, Dad's a translator. How do I get to Dad level awesomeness? And uh, I made videos about the way that I studied. And they're all on Patreon, and you can go at them at your own pace, and they're very, very easy to digest. And uh, it's more about how to learn Japanese versus how, me teaching you to learn specific points about Japanese. Like that's that's where all the like the the air, the crunchy air bubbles are at, guys. Like we're not giving you air bubbles here where you feel full, but you're not actually can like you know there's no sustenance uh, on my channel or like on the Patreon. I'm teaching you the whole meat and potatoes. You're gonna feel fulfilled. You're gonna feel satisfied, and it's actually gonna give you energy and knowledge to use in the future. So go over to Patreon.com/TikyoSam and sign up for the Japanese lessons. I also offer consultations for any of you guys who want to move over here, or you're having trouble like switching jobs or whatever. Or just anything, you know, uh, offer that. And also, if you guys are coming over here and you got the money to burn, especially if you got the dollars now, fucking, uh, I sign up for a tour, guys. I'm only going to offer maybe two to three a month, and I think I'm going to limit that to even two a month now. So if you guys want to sign up for that and you want some awesome local dad time where I'm showing you around Japan, check that out. And also, uh, check out the, if you don't like Patreon, but you still want to support me, you can either do a super chat during the premiere. Hello, everybody in the premiere chat. How you guys doing? Uh, anytime donated or like any super chat donated there is uh, applied to the timer during the live stream that we do at the end of these videos. And, uh, yeah, you also get a bunch of benefits, uh, like it's including if you join the discord, uh, and you're a member here, uh, you get access to my private photo dump, uh, section where you get to see the video, you know, the pictures that I don't post online. So go and check that out. And, uh, yeah, it just, it helps out the channel guys. And also, you know, we have sponsors here like Epidemic Sound and, um, I don't know if we still have the NordVPN link, but yeah, we got all these different sponsors. So if you guys, I'm never gonna use like I'm never gonna like use a sponsor that I wouldn't use myself. You know, like I'm never gonna like raid Shadow Legends this stuff. And if I do, it's gonna be clearly ironic and funny. You know, so. Um, but yeah, for the for the regular local small stuff, uh, yeah, go check it out, guys. Epidemic Sound, NordVPN, whatever links I got down below. And, uh, yeah, uh, do me a favor, smash like button, hit that subscribe bell and subscribe button to get notified next time a video comes out. And, um, and yeah, leave a comment. And I guess the question of the day is, you know, what would you, not what you think will happen, but what would you like to happen for your life five to ten years from now? Like, uh, let me know in the comments down below, guys, because, uh, you know, I think there's nothing wrong with, like, talking about what you want you know it's not necessarily like what you think will happen but what what do you want to happen you know um <coughs> yeah because we're gonna get into that today but anyway yeah uh yeah god dude i've gone to this crosswalk so many times i actually lost my phone uh and my wallet on this exact fucking crosswalk i was going to see oriental pearl one day and i put my phone in my uh my shirt pocket like an idiot and luckily uh japanese people picked it up and one of the reasons why i think people turn in phones or they turn in wallets in japan it's not necessarily because people are better or they're like morally better but i think it's just because there's cameras everywhere and if you pick up a lost wallet and you keep it uh, and they catch you, you can actually go to jail for that. So, uh, you know, I think it's more about, like, because, uh, like, you could go online, you could see pictures or videos of, like, Japanese people just snagging wallets from the train, and then they get arrested for it later. So, you know, um, but either way, yeah, that, that was, uh, I always think of that when I go past that uh, crosswalk section because I had to go to immigration and I had to go to the DMV. Luckily, luckily they were in the same area, but I had to go there and renew my cards. And uh, it was so funny because my license, oh, like I still, like my license, I think this was in December or January. And I had to, like I only had one month to, re to renew my license. Uh, or before my license expired. So I went there, got a new license, and then a month later, I had to go back to the DMV and get a new license. And uh, even this year, I went to the DMV. Like, God, that was so long ago. Because, like, usually they have you 
update your license every two to three years, I think, if you got like a traffic violation. And this last year, I only got one traffic violation. Um, and it was, uh, yeah, like I think it was just for, what was it? It's parking or whatever. Yeah, it was like I parked spaghetti in a bad place or something. Um, it's funny because like when I had my little scooter, I would get in so many fucking, I lost my license or I sus I got my license suspended four times. I had to go to court and convince a judge or some kind of authority figure that I will be a good boy. And yeah, ever since then, I've always tr tried to tell all my friends, like, do not get a 50 CC scooter, spend the extra money, go to dra like Japanese driving school and just get a regular motorcycle license because it's, uh, the cops don't target people on motorcycles as much as they do the scooters because the scooters have about two to three times more like rules and laws that are easy to violate. And uh, the, when you violate them, they're the same like driving style as other cars. So like it, you know, if you're used to driving like a normal person and you drive a scooter like that, you will, if a cop sees you, they'll pull you over and they'll give you a bunch of tickets. So, um, but I was lucky spaghetti is, um, you know, like, uh, spaghetti. I think it's also that like, I look like a normal dude. Like I don't look like, um, some like uh like wannabe like bike gangster guy like i wear fairly normal clothing and spaghetti looks more like a tour bike versus like a racing bike or whatever and um you know cops usually stop people because they're profiling you you know versus actually uh like you know just uh stopping you because you're doing something wrong and uh yeah but i was lucky i you know i god my license you know, let me check my license right now what is the uh, the expiration date for my license, yeah, it's, uh, what is it, 2029. Oh, shit. So, yeah, I don't need to renew my license for another five years. I don't know why that is. Maybe because I didn't get that many, um, traffic violations this time or something. But that, that's so crazy to think that, like, because I've always had to renew my license, like, every two to three years. Two to three years, like, you know, like clockwork. And this one is, um... Wow, that's uh, that's pretty crazy. Like my <laughs> license, I have to renew my uh, permanent residency card before I even have to renew my license. You know, uh, that's again the permanent residency card is like every seven years or something. So that's fun. But uh, yeah, anyway, I don't know. Uh, it's just a fun little like uh, a fun little spiel before getting into the the main part of the video. But yeah, you know, I, I just got done watching this awesome awesome spectacular uh like 30 plus minute video uh from takashi in japan where he interviewed this 92 year old uh new zealand guy who's lived in japan for the last 60 years and it's just um i don't know man it was just so nuts like seeing like i was so hooked normally when i watch like interviews i'll watch them in the background while i'm doing other stuff but i was just like I just stopped everything and I just gave like a hundred percent of my attention to that interview because I was just so like, you know, how often do you get to meet like a 92 year old person and then them being like so spry and sharp that you can have like a regular conversation with them. Like I think the, like uh, the oldest person I've ever met was probably like 88 and they were a Japanese person, but they, they spoke really slow, you know, and they had really bad hearing. And so, um, I don't know, that, that was just so cool to see, not just, like, somebody who's, like, in their 90s and, like, spry, but also they're, like, a foreigner. They're a foreigner in Hokkaido. And, like, um, I, I guess it goes to show, it's, like, if you, uh, you know, if you live in kind of harsh conditions, it, it toughens you up kind of thing, maybe. Uh, because, like, in Hokkaido, I would never want to move to Hokkaido. I love like uh like nature even though I, I love being in the city but i love nature i love like just you know the what do you call it like kind of i feel that being around like such big open areas and being around nature and stuff like it's it's more natural for like i just said nature right but it's more natural i think for humans versus being in a city right and uh there's got to be something better for your mental health or whatever being around all that stuff all the time but also it's like people don't have time for bullshit, right like, you know, in the city, they could just say, like, oh, you know, the budget is inflated, blah, blah, blah. Or we don't have the budget for this, this, and that. But in Hokkaido, it's like, yeah, dude, like, everybody needs to work together or they can't even fucking drive in the snow, you know? Um, 
like a good a good old boyfriend of mine uh, here, Mr. Ardo Debito. Uh, he's a guy who uh, had been in Japan for like what, like 25 plus years or whatever, and he was an American who moved to Hokkaido. And uh, yeah, like he he like after he moved out of Japan, um, you know, like uh, I was like, what's the best part about not living in Hokkaido anymore? And he's like, dude, you know, like when you move to Hokkaido, you gotta you gotta like you know put it in your mind that six months out of the year you're gonna be fucking sh- like snu- uh, shoveling snow. And if you have an old house, you're going to have to climb on that roof and make sure you push that snow off the roof because if you don't push it off, it's going to get too heavy and it's going to collapse the roof. (coughs) And you don't want that to happen. And I was like, fuck, man. And, like, uh, you know, I grew up on and off with snow for most of my life here, you know, and like, or at least when I was in America, right? And, you know, having to do the thing where you go outside, you turn on your car for 10 to 20 minutes to let it warm up, to warm up the fucking windshield, and then you gotta scrape the ice off of the fucking windows, brush the snow off your hood and the top of your car. Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, like, you know, I, I feel like in a way it does toughen you up versus if you were in, like, the, the desert or something, you know? But at the same time, it's like, God, dude, after, after fucking so many years of doing that, I, I welcome my Tokyo lifestyle of like not having to do that. Like hell, even when I was in Chiba, it didn't snow. And, uh, it's just one of those things where I'm like, I'm happy that snow has become one of those things where it's more of like, uh, oh, it's vacation time. So time to see snow versus being like, I have to prepare mentally for snow. (coughs) So... Yeah, I don't know. That interview that interview is so fucking great. Uh, guys, I'm not going to remember it after I put this out, but if any of you are watching my video uh, or in the premiere, please remind me to put the link for that interview in the comment section so you guys can go check that out afterwards. It was a great interview, and um, I love it how Takashi's so respectful, and, you know, it's so easy to talk about like you know fucking just like uh clickbaity shit you know when you're doing an interview it's so easy to go for low-hanging fruit you know when you're going for an interview like that and uh takashi was respectful the whole time and he's just talking about all this different shit and like um he has some really good questions you know and uh i don't know i just i love the fact that that interview this old guy is pretty much like, yeah, like he's just saying like, yeah, we went to Japan and, you know, we use telegraphs to talk to people. And like, uh, he's like, I was a missionary. So like my wife and I both went to language school and, uh, like, he's like, you know, I was an accountant. I grew up in New Zealand and then my father owned a farm and I became an accountant to like help my father with the farm. And then, you know, my father uh, is like, yeah, you need to, like, now that you become an accountant, you have to work here full time or something. And he's like, dude, I have a family now, like, and, like, uh, I'm a Christian. Like, fuck this. Like, I, he said he saw in a magazine that, like, other uh, men from New Zealand were going to Japan. He's like, yeah, fuck it. I could go and do that, too. And I was like, yeah, dude, that's, that's badass. Fuck yeah, you could do that. And, um, I don't know. I just, I thought that was, uh, like, I really love the guy's story. And I, I love the fact, too, that he's like, my wife is Japanese. And I'm like, wait, what? Like, I thought he moved over there with a white wife. He's like, oh, yeah, she died. I don't know. For some reason, that makes me, like, in a world now where, like, 2024, where, like, everybody and their mom seems to get divorced and stuff. It's so sweet. And, like, uh, it just sticks in your memory if somebody's like, oh, yeah, I remarried. Not because I got divorced, but because my wife died or, like, my husband died. And I just didn't want to be alone again. And I'm, I don't know. It's just, it's nice to see that those people, they waited and then they, they go on and like they, they, you know, (coughs) people like to complain about boomers and like the older generations and stuff, but maybe it just because they weren't the TV and uh, internet generation or whatever, but it's just, uh, God, I mean, it's so interesting to think about like how people that did not grow up around technology or the internet functioned you know like i was just thinking about it the other day how uh what was it like yeah it was just yesterday or something like i was watching an old movie and like or not even old like 80s or 90s or something and this guy's like oh i need to find this business and so he looks at the white pages the yellow pages you know and he's like oh i found the i found the business and it's like yeah dude like back in the day if you didn't have your fucking business in the yellow pages phone book 
then how did people know that your business existed you know and like uh that's just um that's crazy you know to think that that's like that's how people did it back in the day you know and um it just felt like more like people were more focused on what they were than what they were doing it's probably just because the like the you know less amount of distractions or whatever right and uh and so it's like I, it's it's good because I like it when you watch videos where you're in like where the old people are being interviewed because they really do have a different perspective. I mean, I think it's the same for every generation, right? Like every 10 years, depending on how you grew up, like, you know, I grew up right when the internet was becoming a thing. And I, I you know, like I was able to access the internet from an early, like, you know, from like my teens or whatever. Right. And like, same thing with cell phones. So I have that appreciation like i have that gratefulness in the back of my head that i'm like wow like you know these like i remember a time when this when you had to like just go home and pick up a phone because uh, to call somebody and you had to remember the phone number or have like a notebook by the phone with all the phone numbers in there so you could remember to call your friends and stuff like that was so cool like there's no speed dial you know and and if you wanted to know something you had to look it up in the yellow pages versus googling it and uh you know, like we had TV and stuff, but if you didn't have cable TV, then you just had the same local channels and it's just boring. And uh, I don't know. It's just, <coughs> it's so interesting to think about stuff these days. Cause like I was talking to an American friend of mine who makes their money in Japan in dollars and uh, they're here on a spouse visa so they can do whatever job they want pretty much and they get money. Uh, from America like for doing their job remotely and they're making like hand over fist ever since like the yen went to shit like they're like they're really raking in the money you know like they transferred a shit ton of cash from America to their Japanese banks and uh, yeah so like they were able to move to like a bigger apartment and like buy nicer shit and uh, yeah you know and um, it's just uh, I was talking to them and they're younger. They're about like seven years younger than me or whatever, right? And uh, like I'm talking to them about, I forgot, like they were like, I don't, I, I forgot what exactly brought up this, the topic, but we were talking about like the yen. And right now, as of today, the yen is like 157 yen to the dollar. So if you come to Japan, basically your dollar is worth a dollar fifty in Japan money. And, Jap and Japanese prices, there's there's like inflation is here, but it's not as bad as America. So uh, you know you want to buy some bread, or you want to fucking uh, you know put gasoline in your in your fucking car, or uh, you want to I don't know. I heard to hotels raise their prices, but. Um, you know, you want to do whatever, right? And, uh, oh, yeah, here it is. I switched to nighttime now. Um, <coughs> like, if you want to do whatever now, like, if you wanted to come to Japan as a tourist, this is the perfect time to come because the dollar is so fucking strong right now. And, and, Jap and Japan doesn't have, like, hardcore inflation like it does everywhere else in the world, apparently. So, um, but, yeah, but I was just telling them how... Like, uh, the, yeah, uh, you know, I've been in Japan for almost 20 years now, not as much as that 60, 60 plus years in Japan guy, but I've been in Japan for almost 20 years now. And like, one thing that I noticed is that things always go up, right? And here I was in the wrong fucking lane and I had to check my Jeepus, I think. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is the other thing too, guys. If you, this is why you need like a, a better like helmet intercom system because you don't know what the fuck like you know if you're listening to your gps or something then you don't know what the hell's going on and uh and if you the speaker's too low that you can't hear it and yeah i covered up the the camera because uh you know i don't want you guys to see all my gay porn it's just the phone is filled with gay porn but it's like uh i don't know you think that I think being in Japan for this time, the yen, like, ev prices always go up and they go down. It's one of those things where they fluctuate. I mean, same thing happened with gas prices, you know? Gas prices, they go up, they go down. You know, I think when I left the States, the the gas, like, per gallon was like 4 75 or something per gallon. And, um, the thing is, is that, like, whenever inflation hits or, like, uh, you know, um, 
like, like what is it like the like the currency gets weaker or stronger sure that affects people but for everyday working stiffs who are making only like two to three grand a month and are living pretty frugally it in my opinion it doesn't hit as hard <clears throat> and that's the thing it's like you know whenever like there's no like apocalyptic like fallout kind of bullshit where it's like oh no this is like the end of days kind of thing uh, like it, that rarely happens, right? Or at least the you know knock on wood, that's not gonna happen. It's already kind of gone past that shit. It's no, there's no like Prussian Frank thing gonna happen in Japan where it's like you know oh, well, like, it's ten thousand yen to get a piece of bread or something. Like I know Japan's got their shit together too well for that shit to happen. But uh, like I do believe that like everything, like the yen will eventually bounce back. Like when I, oh, God, I I don't remember when exactly it was but i remember coming to japan at one point and it was 75 yen to the dollar and so the yen was actually stronger than the dollar and uh i remember being like fuck like uh, like everything's expensive in japan because i don't my money doesn't go that far and now it's the exact opposite but these things they change over time you know and um i mean like that's the thing that people need to recognize they, they need to acknowledge that like like, not everything, like, especially when it comes to this currency stuff, lasts forever, you know? It doesn't, uh, it do yeah, fucking stupid GPS telling me not to do a U-turn and then do a U-turn, and then I'm like, wait, what? And just, ugh. Yeah, this is the thing, guys. Like, um, yeah, this, this whole rant, I was so disoriented because I was trying to find my way home from Odaiba, and, uh, luckily, I found out how, like, now I remember exactly what to do. When you're on a motorcycle, sorry for the segue for a second, guys, but when you're on a motorcycle, uh, a lot, of, if you're in a car, you want shortcuts. You want, like, a bunch of, like, shortcut or chikamichi or whatever they call it, where you're, there's a bunch of different roads to help you navigate through the, the traffic jams. But when you're on a bike, you can skip through all of those, uh, traffic jams and just go to the front of the line. And, um, and so like for me, it's a lot easier when I think of, uh, the roads as in terms of turning or how many turns. And so from this road to get all the way back to Shinjuku, uh, from that parking lot, it's like you turn right, turn left, keep going, turn left, keep going straight, and then turn left again. And then you get back to Shinjuku and like, uh, but when you're because uh, like you want the most efficient route possible and when you have the gps and you can barely hear the speaker of it and you're like ah fuck um yeah it's just a pain in the ass but anyway the point i was trying to get at is that like you know the yen is really weak right now but it doesn't mean it's always going to be weak it'll eventually bounce back either because of something happening or like intervention and uh, because japan's got a lot of uh it's got a lot of people to please abroad and those people need Japan to do well. So, like, if Japan doesn't fix it, those guys will come in. But, I mean, the whole point is, though, is that, like, my friend, they make money with dollars, right? And so they just assume that Japan, like, it's in their interest for Japan to be weak when it comes to the yen. Because they're like, hey, like, I get to live a very rich lifestyle uh, because I, you know, because I'm making this, uh, this money. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's like... Uh, that meme from uh that i've seen from uh always sunny in philadelphia where it's like like hey man like you know the the economy's going to shit why are you guys not freaking out and it's like well we're we're poor we're old poor we've always been poor so like we're used to like being around like you know having to deal with this those people that are freaking out they're new poor they're people that have never lived frugally and like wanted to live above their means and now they kind of put themselves into a hole and they're fucked <laughs> and so it's like for me like as long the only thing i worry about is it's not even gasoline it's just rent you know if rent goes higher because a lot of foreigners come to japan and they buy land here uh like because that's what happened in canada right and like in america too well kind of like in canada a lot of chinese people and everybody that didn't even fucking have visas for canada came there bought a bunch of properties and then they rented them out and they like kind of inflated the rental price stuff and they fucked over uh like you know regular people just wanting to rent an apartment and uh because like you know the the chinese people just wanted to go over there and what you know uh what do you call it uh wash sinking uh, launder their money or whatever right out of china 
And I know there's a lot of other reasons, but that was like a big one, right? And same thing in America. Like I never, I thought corporations couldn't buy houses, but I guess like a, a, they allow companies to buy houses now, and then they just turn them into Airbnbs or like rentals or whatever. And uh, and then they charge up the ass and they make this inflated rental price thing, so people can't afford that. And um, the, that's the nice thing about Japan. Japan is rent controlled. And I hope it stays that way. So if you moved into a, an apartment and it like let's say it was like uh, eighty thousand yen or whatever when you moved in, it doesn't matter. Like even when you renew your contract, your <coughs> your landlord can't raise that price. It's not they're not legally allowed to do that. And um, like even if the contract says otherwise, you're not allowed to do that. And I didn't know that. And so like for me. Like, like if I was in the states and I wanted to live in the center of the city, I bet I could find a cheap place that was sketchy and probably filled with bed bugs or something, and definitely not up to stretch when it comes to the fire code、uh, safety regulations, right? But、uh, I wouldn't be comfortable, you know. Like right now, I'm in the center of the city. I'm in a fairly decently big apartment, and、uh, you know, it's like, and I can afford to live in this area, and like. But what if all these other foreigners like come in that have money, and they take advantage of the weekend and they buy up all these properties? Like that's the only thing I'm really concerned about because like, if you make rent too high, <coughs> then you're fucked. And and the the funny thing is is that in that Takashi from Japan interview,、uh, he talks about how it's really hard for Japanese people to find a job. And、um, I think there there's two different distinctions there. It's like it's really hard to find a job. If you're looking for a career job, maybe. But if you like, you know, and I think this, like, I had a roommate a while ago, maybe like five, seven years ago or something, right? And、uh, I remember he moved in with me. He was like the first roommate at my house, and、uh, I love the guy. I don't, I don't think he likes me now, but I love him. I love him still.、Uh, but he's,、um, you know, like he,、uh, he moved in, and、um, because. He had gotten a brand new job at like this、uh, law firm or something, like some kind of office, as an in-house translator, and uh, like uh, at this big company. Like he had just moved to Tokyo, and like the company was all fucking sexy or whatever. And、uh, he moved in to this like big apartment that had、uh, parking, like a parking lot in there and stuff. And it was like twelve hundred bucks a month or whatever. And which was okay because he kind of followed the rule that it's like your rent and bills should be like one third of your salary. So <coughs> he was able to afford that. But then right after he moved in there, there was like some kind of economic bubble or something, and, and that burst. And、uh, they had massive layoffs in his company. And even though like he had just gotten there and he was a contracted employee,、uh, he was able to get a severance package. But They, he still lost his job, but he was so, so prideful that he didn't want to. Like you know, he had been an English teacher before, like years before and stuff, and he was like, "I'm not going back to English teaching," and or, or, or and so he just stayed in his apartment, and he took out like he just maxed out his credit card, and then he had to borrow money from like his family and friends, and then, and yeah, and then like by the end of it, he's just like, "Yup, he had to." He had to fucking move out, you know. He he couldn't afford to be there anymore, and、uh, and luckily, like I was looking for roommates at that time, and I had a garage so he could come and park his car there, and、um, and yeah, it's just like some people they're they're so prideful that like I I asked him, I was like, dude, your rent was only like twelve hundred a month. You could have easily gotten like an English teaching job for like twenty three hundred, and like worked that. While looking for another job, and he's like, "I wasn't gonna do that. I'm not going back to English teaching."、And、I think that's a big, that's the big difference between me and、uh, a lot of other people is that, <coughs> you know, I think that some people they're they're very prideful, you know, they're like they 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 see that they've reached this、uh, this next step, this next like、uh, you know the plateau from the last plateau. Which is like you know they don't want to go back down the mountain a little bit, even if it's just a little bit, because they already stayed up top, you know, and、um, and like that's the thing, you know, like when you're, like for me, like I've always been a guy that I'm like, hey, you know, if I 
if I lose my career job or something, I could always teach English or uh, like, you know, I could figure something out, you know, like e even if worse come to came to worse, I'd go work at a Yoshinoya or something in order like and while looking for other jobs. Like if I needed to, I would move into like another Nakano Shinbashi guest house where I would only pay like, you know, 200 to 300 bucks a month for rent and I would just save up cash again. Like you can always build up your cash reserves again like luckily japan is full of those guest houses where you just you can work and it might not be like the most glamorous thing you might not be happy about it but at least it's an option you know and i don't think in america or other countries you have that option you have that luxury you know and so um you know when i think about the yen being weak or something right now the only people i see complaining about the yen being weak are my friends who love to buy foreign shit and my friends who like to buy real estate and my friends who like to go travel abroad you know so it's basically my rich friends are the only ones complaining about this and uh it's just it's funny <coughs> because what i've gone through like two different uh like economic shocks since being in japan right i went through the the swine flu like lehman brothers shock i went through the corona shock or whatever you know and uh but you know when it comes to people that are just making two to three grand a month and they're already living frugally you know like i go i don't shop at normal supermarkets i shop at wholesale places uh i don't ride the train i take my motorcycle because gas is cheaper than the train fare uh, you know, I, um, I try to buy everything used. And so, cause like I never, uh, like even though I make enough money that I can put away some money into savings every month, I'm still always like wary that like, you know, shit can hit the fan. And so, uh, you always gotta just be prepared. And I know like people are like, well, Hey, you can't just keep money in your savings account, you, you know, because, uh, inflation that's bad. And I'm like, yes, but you should still keep at least 30 grand in your bank account and then after that yeah sure like invest your money like put it into stocks or you know uh, a mutual fund or whatever you want whatever you feel like uh to make sure you're, that can make your money work for you then go ahead and go do that but you know the thing about japan is that like uh they like japan has cheap housing and they have a surplus of jobs so as long as you're willing to bite your tongue or eat some crow eat some humble pie and work as a construction worker or something you will be able to save some money you know and i think that's a lot of like that's the issue of a lot of people they live above their means you know like they'll have a regular job but then they they get a big apartment and they buy a bunch of new shit or whatever right and then they're like oh god why and then they have to move because they didn't financially prepare <clears throat> and it's just like yeah dude you set yourself up for failure man and so when it's like, what will Japan be like in 10 years? Will there be more foreigners in Japan? Will Japan have an economic collapse? Uh, I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think we necessarily have to be so negative when we're thinking about like the projected future of Japan. Um, you know, cause it's, it's one of those things where it's like, you don't have all the information in front of you or you don't have like enough, like an educated opinion about the way the world works enough to kind of like make a, a properly like clear estimate, you know, uh, but you got to have faith, right? Like, uh, I know it sounds like kind of a, like a lazy answer, but you got to have faith that things are going to work out. And because uh, I mean, it's like that that uh, that uh, screenshot from Cowboy Bebop, you know, when like Spike and uh, Spike's in his um, in his uh, spaceship and uh he's with those two other guys and they're like oh no the spaceship's breaking up oh we're not gonna hold and and but it's out of their control you know like they just gotta kind of ride it out you know while re-entering the atmosphere and spike just lights a cigarette and he's just like whatever happens happens you know and like that's kind of the mentality you got to have about this stuff and uh it's funny because you see like japanese people on twitter complaining about like you know asshole tourists and like even uh, this week, um, the, like uh, some convenience store in a in a town that's by uh, Fu uh, Mount Fuji, you know, they they said that they're gonna put up like a giant billboard, like above it or something, so that way, because uh, tourists kept going there and blocking the traffic, just to take a iconic picture in front of this thing, 
And, you know, the the businessman part of me is like Japan could have made money off of that. They could have like, you know, capitalized off of that being such a big tourist, like unofficial tourist spot and like, you know, open up in a, like a, a parking lot or whatever where people could park and charge admission for people that want to get that perfect picture or whatever. And like they could make money off of that and they could like stimulate the growth of the town. But they're like, nah, fuck that. We're just going to block it because fuck these foreigners. And, um... You know, it's just, it, I understand where the Japanese people are coming from. I understand why they're pissed off. But at the same time, like, you got to be, like, it's like, I wish, it, it's like kind of when the Logan Paul suicide force thing happened, where I'm like, there's literally so much other fucked up shit happening right now in the world that you, that deserves your attention, that could use your attention and you being angry about what's going on. But people are just like, yeah, but fucking white guys, rah, you know, disrespect to the culture. I'm going to grift so hard about virtue signaling about how I'm better than this guy and blah, blah, blah. And it's just, it's such a waste of energy, you know? And uh, like the same thing, it's like Japanese people complaining about foreigners or tourists. And I'm like, dude, your government is the one that fucking did this, man. Your government, instead of like thinking of other ways to stimulate the economy, doubled, tripled, quadrupled down on tourism, and they didn't fucking qu like you know it's just like classic bureaucracy, classic government. They didn't fucking prepare <clears throat> for any of this shit, you know. And and, the, and so like of course the people that end up getting fucked in the, in the end are just the middle class people that are stuck with the government's shitty, lazy decisions, right? And so. You know, Jamie's people are like, oh, goddamn tourists everywhere. And I'm like, well, your government's the one that decided not to make another VHS player or something to put them on the map. You know, their government's the one that, uh, or their corporations, like, are the ones that have shitty cybersecurity. Uh, like, you know, it's just, it, like, God, it, there's, I mean, to be fair, you can always complain about any government that you're, uh, you know, where you live or whatever. But it's just like, dude, like, I don't like all these tourists being around either. But, like, hey, if it stimulates the economy... Like, and it's like, well, the average tourist only spends two to three grand or whatever. It's not really that much. And I'm like, dude, money is money. It's money that was not there before being there. And like, it's not just about the taxes being paid for like sales tax or whatever. It's about like stimulating the economy, like stimulating the fucking, the regular businesses that Japanese people didn't give a shit about. Uh, like, you know, like I, I had this, uh, I posted this thing on Twitter where they inter this TV crew interviewed these American dudes that um that were like visiting japan and stuff and uh they took classes on like how to dye clothing or like how to make a japanese kite or something and the owner is just like she's vivid in the or livid or whatever the word is like in the interview because she's like japanese people don't give a shit about this anymore and she's like i'm just so happy somebody cares about this because if they don't care this traditional fucking like uh method of making kites or whatever the fuck that's gonna go the way of the dodo and like people won't remember like this anymore and so she was just so happy that like somebody actually gave a damn and so it's like uh like that makes me that makes me happy when i see shit like that because i'm like wow foreigners like, you know, like, people giving a shit about the stuff that the locals don't even give a shit about. That's great, you know? And so, and, like, also, it's like, uh, I was talking to, I, I went out with some friends the other day, uh, for some, some food and whatever, and we were filming YouTube stuff, and all of us have experienced a shit ton more foreigners, uh, in our neighborhoods, you know? And I was like, I asked them, I'm like, do you think they're tourists? Because I live in Shinjuku, so most of these guys are tourists, but... Um, all my other friends, they don't live in like the city center areas. They live in like suburb areas and they're like, no, no, there's like a ton of new foreigners that have moved in. And it makes me wonder like what kind of jobs they're doing. Like, are they students or whatever, you know? And, um, and it's like, for me, I'm like, Hey, I don't, I don't really like want a super multicultural Japan, but if they could do it right where people speak the fucking language and they assimilate. And I mean, to be fair, if these people have kids, they will assimilate, you know, like the kids will grow up and they'll know about all the holidays in Japan. They'll know about all the customs in Japan. Uh, they'll know Japanese language. And uh, then if they go abroad, they'll be able to fucking teach the way of Japan to the world. Like, you know, you go anywhere in the world and there's so many people fucking speaking Chinese and Korean because a lot of those people were like, fuck that country. And they left and they went to go do their own thing. But there's not a lot of Japan people or Japanese people or Japanese speaking people abroad. So 
Like the more people that aren't Japanese that learn about Japan and the customs and learn to speak the language, I'm never going to think of that as a bad thing. But there's going to, but you know, on the opposite side of that coin though, it's that like, what about all the people that come here and don't learn the language and don't assimilate and like expect Japan to bend over backwards for them? Like, that's not cool then. Like, nah, like fuck those guys. But, um, you know, like it's proved everywhere in the world. It's like the people in charge are the ones that just give a shit about one thing, money. They don't care about screwing over anybody as long as they get money to fund their, their gay porn, you know, Diddy, <laughs> P. Diddy, uh, gay orgy, inf cocaine infused, uh, you know, $18,000 umbrella stand kind of lifestyles, you know? Um, yeah, it's just, it's fucking, it's, it's stupid, you know? It's, it's fucking... It's just redonkulous. And so, because, like, at the end of the day, the people that get hurt are the middle class dudes that are just trying to live their lives and be good. And so, it's like, what will Japan be like in 10 years? Uh, you know? Like, what will it be like? Will there, like, how big will the, the foreign population be? How will the economy be? How will, how will the rent be? You know? Like, how will, uh, like, God, dude, I'll be in my, I'll be in my 40s, you know, in 10 years and shit. And it's just like, God damn, like, what will, you know, will I have a family by then? You know, will I will I Vin Diesel this up? Will I have uh, will will I still be doing YouTube? You know, um, like what hobbies will I have versus now? You know, um, like will I still be watching and collecting VHS tapes or something? I don't know. It's just it's one of those things where uh, you can choose to be negative and pessimistic, or you can be positive and optimistic. And I'd like to think it's like, what kind of Japan do you want this to be in 10 years from now? And for me, it's like, I'd like them to get their shit together where people want to have kids again. And the, I think a big reason why people don't have kids is just, it's just the fucking, it's just the distractions, man. There's so many distractions for everything these days where it's just like, um, you know, and look at that guy. He pulled up right in front of me. He didn't even give a fucking damn. Fuck that guy. Um... You know, it's like, uh, we're so distracted with everything, you know, TV, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, you know, all these pop-ups on our phones, you know, it's hard for us to kind of differentiate sometimes, like, what's really important, what's not, and, uh, I have a folder in my bookmarks, uh, that are, um, and there, it says, uh, it says, check this every month as kind of like a mind RAM reset thing. And it's just a bunch of videos that like make me uh, remember and like pro like my priorities and stuff. And like one of the videos is like Casey Neistat's A Guide to Life. I watch that almost every month, uh, like clockwork, the first of the month. You know, I get even have a reminder to check out that folder, right? And anyway, I rewatched a, a video that I had in there called uh, "Curiosity Killed George" or something, and um, and it's this uh, it's this guy named uh, Have. Uh, something hall or something um and he's an animator on uh youtube and uh or not an animator but he does like um what do you call it like green screen overlapping kind of shit and all of his uh videos are always comedy you know they're always fucking comedy videos and uh but this guy's video um i i don't know why because I, I only clicked on like a couple of his videos he's made a shit ton but i clicked on that one and like in the video, <coughs> Curious George is diagnosed with some sickness or whatever, right? He's diagnosed with some sickness, and um, and like he's gonna die. He, like he's and so you find out George can actually talk, and that like yeah he was curious and like you know he went down the rabbit hole of like all these like government conspiracies and shit, and like uh, you know and he was like angry about all this fucked up shit going on and stuff, and then he's like. Uh, but it's weird because you think it's a comedy thing. Like, is it gonna? Okay, so like, where's the punchline? Where's the funny? When's the funny part gonna happen? You know? But the movie, like the video, it's only like a four or five minute video. It's like it's not funny. You know? It, like at, at some part, like at some parts, it is. Like it makes you like I, I spit my uh, my coffee out when he's like, "Have you heard of PizzaGate?" <laughs> I'm like, "What?" George, curious George is talking about PizzaGate and stuff and. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, um, there's this great quote, and here, actually, I, I saved it. That's how much I liked it. I saved it to my thing, and I can read it out to you guys right now. And um, and here, where is it? I want to I wanna read that out to you guys. And it says, uh, 
Um, where is it? And cable of the story. Oh, wait, no, those are just my notes for... Uh, whenever I get, like, a really good... Um, what do you call it? It's like, um, whenever I see something, like a good YouTube comment or something, I usually save it. And, uh, and I'll, I'll save it because I want to read it later, you know? And, um, oh yeah, it wasn't in, in this memo pad. Here, hold on. And, and so, yeah, uh, let me, let me read this out to you guys. So it says, and this is called Curiosity Killed the George. And so it says, as I lay on my deathbed, Looking down that long, dreary hallway of life I leave behind, I just wish I spent less time snooping around, poking my head in doors, and more time looking at what was right in front of me. And then the guy says to George, What is that? What was there? And then George replies with, Love. Love, Theodore. Because there's so much you can do in this life that means nothing. But one thing that means anything, and I'm sure of it now, is love. Love, Theodore. Love while you still can. Try to minimize all that bullshit they tell you to do, and just love. Because life can be so damn complicated. And you just want to look around and ask questions. You got no reason to ask questions when you have something as inexplicable as love. Because you know there's no answers. And uh, I love that. This is like a fucking comedy YouTube channel. And they just sucker punch you out of nowhere with this really meaningful, you know, speech from the fucking Curious George, you know. And uh, yeah, it's just like, um, you know, I think a lot of us get caught up in the superficial bullshit of just like, oh, like, uh, and like, hey, me too. You know, I am, I am not innocent when it comes to like getting caught up in like random internet drama or something and like going down the rabbit hole on that shit. But it's like at the end of the day, we only have so much time and so much focus throughout the day to dedicate it to something. So why not dedicate it to something that will make you feel better, you know? Which will make you feel good and like you know and it's like that's love it could be finding somebody to love it could be finding something you do that you love but it's just like um like have that as your main emotion like because when you have love you got gratitude and when you got gratitude you're never gonna feel like you wasted your time you know and um it's like uh i don't know i feel like when people get angry or they're pissed off or like they're really frustrated it's like you're just trying to mask something you know you, you you feel insecure you feel inadequate you feel lost or whatever so like it, but like anger it feel it makes you feel like you have a purpose it makes you feel like like you, you're you're doing something that has meaning or that like you're fighting the good fight but it's like are you really <laughs> like like, are you really? I understand there's some battles that need to be fought, but it's like you getting angry at the guy who cut you off and like chasing him down or something. Like, that's not gonna do anything for anybody, you know? Like, you getting angry at somebody on the internet for being a piece of shit or something. It's like, what? Well, what is that gonna do for you, you know? Um, I don't know. I just, I, I love that quote, and it made me think about how I'm just like, yeah, like I need, like you know, it's like you. We don't have, uh, like, I remember that scene in that movie Pig, right? With, like, uh, uh, Jack, oh, what is it, not Jack, uh, Nicolas Cage or whatever, right? And he's, like, you know, he's talking to one of his old workers who has, like, opened up this really, really fancy, uh, really famous, um, like, restaurant in their town. And you could tell the guy is just, like, a shell of the person he used to be. And he's trying to justify how his place is cool and unique and hip. And they got, they do a bunch of stuff. But, and then like Nicolas Cage's character is like, what did you want to do when you worked for me? Remember, you had one dream. You wanted to open up a, an English pub. And what was that food going to be? And like, you know, like, and the guy is denying it. He's like, he's pretending like he doesn't remember like that. Like he wanted to open up an English pub. And he's like, no, like, I don't remember that. And he's like, what did you want the food to be? And he's like, um... What the hell did he say? It was like it was like boiled eggs with like curry mustard or something, and um, and you know, and the guy's like, uh, you know, and um, and he's like, yeah, dude, like he's like, that's what you're passionate about, and he's like, but that doesn't make money. 
that doesn't fuck it. And he's like, dude, all this shit, all these people that come to your restaurant, all these people that say they love your shit, like, they don't matter. <laughs> like, none of this matters, man. It's like, you got to do, you got to do what you're fulfilled with. And like, I was talking, like I said, I was talking to that friend about the yen and stuff. And I'm like, look, like, like, cause they were saying how it's like, you know, you got to work on getting a lot of money. You need a lot of money. So when, when shit hits the fan, if you're like medically in trouble or something or whatever, like you gotta, you gotta be prepared. And it's like, um, and for me, yeah, I don't have a lot of money, but I have a lot more time. And like, after I spent all my twenties working six days a fucking week, you know, I'm like, I would rather be poor and have a lot of free time and spending that time exactly how I want to spend it versus working to get money in case like an emergency happens you know and uh yeah that might be a stupid way to live but it's my decision and i'm okay with it you know like i'm okay with what whatever cards fall down kind of thing you know but um it's like japan in 10 years i think that japan will be the same that japan has always been <laughs> you know there will be slight new changes everywhere and like uh they'll happen over a long course of time and then it'll become normal like hell there might be uh you know the the way you know like uh we might have more robot waiters everywhere you know rice and like uh, vegetables might be more expensive uh they might change those rent laws uh, so the you know the the rent is fluctuating more and bullshit um or it could be good it could be that japan is still based you know Japan still takes care of the renters market, uh, you know, and uh, people can still afford just to be people. And even if more foreigners come in, it's easier for them to assimilate and become part of Japanese culture and Japanese, you know, learn the Japanese language and contribute to this country. And um, yeah, you know, I mean, like, it's like if you but I mean, the whole thing is, it's like it's kind, it's out of our control, right? <laughs> it's out of our control so like whatever happens happens kind of thing right but um i mean hell japan could have like a a, a great like economic uh explosive explosive growth or whatever right like it could invent the next flying car or something and it puts japan on the map and then they can raise the prices so tourists don't come over here that much or whatever like i don't know i mean the thing is is that like whenever you're doing something hardcore you're gonna have to deal with like uh, the bullshit little tiny qu consequences that come in there. It's like it's like having a fish tank or something, you know. You have a fish tank, and if you have one fish, it's great. You don't need to clean it that often. If you have a bunch of fish, you gotta clean it more often. But hey, like having a bunch of fish swimming around in a fish tank, that's cool, you know. And like it looks colorful, but you gotta clean up all that shit afterwards. So it's everything's a give and take but yeah you know i mean it's just oh yeah sorry guys i had to loop the footage there for a second but uh anyway it's just like i don't know i'd like to think about like what how is japan's culture gonna change how is the economy gonna change you know um because like 10 years 10 years is a long time for like a bunch of new generation of 20 year olds to come up into the world and be the new adults and you know, it means that uh, the older people that are in charge are going to be less around because, uh, you know, it's not as many old people as before. So, I don't know. It's just, um, it's one of those things where it's just like, uh, you don't know until you know, right? But, uh, I don't know. I, we're getting to the end of this rant. And, uh, I, like, I know that you guys don't really comment that much on these videos. I would love it if you commented more. But, like, what do you guys think about like the positive stuff that will happen in Japan because we already know all the negative shit that could happen like you know like they, it gets flooded with foreigners and they don't learn Japanese and the you know, big race wars everywhere or it could be um, you know or like you know China attacks Japan or something like there's a we know all we can imagine and talk about all the bad things that could happen but what are the good things that could happen and more importantly like how do you think the good things could happen you know like, what do you think are the, um, you know, like, how are the things, how could they change for the better, you know? Like, that's what I want to know. Like, I honestly think that if Japan gave a lot more incentives for people having kids, and I mean, like, you know, do something where it's like, we'll pay for the five ye first five years of you having a kid or something. Like, we'll just pay. And they're already doing something similar, but it's just like, you could have the best product in the world, but if you're not advertising it, 
then people don't give a shit, right? So it's like if they could just advertise better to people being like, hey, you know, like uh, we offer, we're going to be offering all this shit. All you got to do is just fucking start having kids. Then I don't know. I feel like that would help. You know, I feel like that would help them and shit and just, I don't know. Um, but hey, what do you guys think about that? Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on how Japan could be better? Let me know in the comments down below. And uh, did you make it all the way this far? If so, and you don't want to answer such a serious question, just write down in the comment section, uh, blue light streets. Just write down a funny sentence with the words blue light streets in them. And people will be freaked out. They'll be like, what the hell's going on? What are they talking about? And that'll be our little secret. But um, anyway, yeah, guys, that's it for the TK Rants. Uh, there will be a live stream after this more than likely. So make sure to check out the links uh, in the premiere chat. And if you're watching this not while it's premiering, then check out the link at the bottom uh, or at the top of the comment section. And that'll be the link to the live stream. And come over and talk to me and hang out with me and, uh, you know, have a good morning with your hot dad. But anyway, this has been Tikyo Rants. I'm your hot dad, Papa Tikyo. I want to get at least 50 likes per video. So uh, let's get this up to 50 likes. Thank you guys so much for the love and support. And I promise I will be making more on the bike uh, rants soon enough. So I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. <laughs>